All right. So I guess it's a, a good time to clean out your ears and listen, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All righty, folks. Uh, it's a uh, news day here at from Milwaukee to Nashville. News day consists of a day where news consistently breaks and we get no break from anything. So we just <laughs> throw it all at you. Yep. And a video. So we're going to get to that right now. And we're going to start with the hottest topic, these guys and Vegas. Yep. Big news. What I, I I sent a message. I started sending messages at like six this morning on this. That it was starting to break at like six this morning. Good God, GMs never sleep, do they? Nope. All righty. So the uh, final trade info is as followed. The Buffalo Sabers have traded. Um, Jack Eichel and a conditional third round pick for Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, a conditional first, a conditional second. Uh, the conditional first is this year, conditional second is next year. This is how that works. All right. So the conditional first, if Vegas picks inside the top 10 of the draft, they get to keep their pick for this year, but next year, mandatory. If they're picking number one overall, it does not matter. Buffalo gets it. Okay. If it does not follow that the if if they get pick inside the top ten, next year's conditional second becomes a first for 2024. Okay. So Vegas better start winning. Or they are without two first round picks for years to come. Right. <coughs> the other <coughs> kicker here is Vegas now sits <coughs> 16 million over the cap. Yep, 16 million over the cap. That's a lot. Um, now, with how much sitting on long-term injured reserves? Uh, let's see. We've got 10 million, 9.5, 7 million, uh, 750,000, uh, along with another 1 point, oh, 2 million. Let's just say 2 million. There's about 75 million off, uh, 1.925. So one million nine hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, that's how much is on their cap at this current moment. Um, <coughs> so those are all players that are injured, and they're on IR. Right. Um. So Vegas not looking so hot at the current moment. Buffalo looking like they're on fire. Right. Without Eichel. And now you add them a center and a winger who can score. Right. I don't think Buffalo's worried at the current moment. And not only that, I wouldn't be surprised if their players come the deadline um, that they wouldn't do some shaking up a little bit. I mean, right. you know, with their pick or with Vegas's pick, depending on the situation. Um, they've got a lot of room, wiggle room right here uh, at the current moment. Uh, Buffalo currently, so update on Vegas as far as the draft as it sits. This year, no first, they have their second, no third, no fourth, two fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. So they are not picking round one now. Uh, they do have one in round three. Run in round two, no, none in round four. So they're not picking in some really high end spots. Right. Uh, Buffalo, on the other hand, has three first, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. They also carry over a conditional second for the next year, like I said, with Vegas, but they also. 
if I remember a hundred percent correctly, this trade as it said. Yes, Buffalo for Sam Reinhart and Don, Devin Levy signing right. Um, if uh, Florida finishes does picks in the top ten, um, they also Buffalo will also be picking it, taking their twenty twenty three pick, and the condition will sit as follows. Um, so there's that. Um, it's a weird kooky confusing situation here right um west carolina that gives me massive migraines <laughs> mm. um so there's a lot going on there um <coughs> just a quick there uh waiver wire uh, we're just going to check that really quick and check the waiver wire um, and, and check the transactions today. Um, as it sits uh, beyond the trade, no movement. The, um, uh, that's, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so on to our, 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 our overall cons consensus of, of this trade. Okay. So you get Alex Tuck, proven score, good hockey player, great right. crunch, young, good center, a first round pick where no matter what, you're going to have either a first this year or a first next year. And a second the year following from them. Right. And the only thing you're giving up is a third, whatever you pick in the second round. I'd call that a win. Yeah. Personally. Now, um, all of this stem to two things. All right. One, how Tuck performed and Krebs performs. Those two play key. Now, the other two parts of this is who the Sabres used to draft these players, the picks to draft these players. And then on the flip side of that coin, you hold in this hand Jack Eichel. Right. Because Jack Eichel is the big part of this. And if Eichel does not play as well as he was before being injured or even slightly worse you're going to have issues yeah buffalo wins the trade by default yep now this is one of those where you could see a trade tree of years of where <laughs> This move, this place, this move, this place, this move, this place. Yeah, you can see a lot of that. Right. Um, Buffalo started out really good this year, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, I wanted to add in something kind of wonky for you because I figured you guys might find this a little hilarious, hilarious for you. All righty, so going in into the draft... All right, wait a minute. What? Who has? All right. Arizona has the most picks in next year's draft. Yep. Um, the team with the best odds in next year's draft would be Columbus. They have the Blackhawks and their own. And if the Blackhawks don't pull out of it, they're going to have issues. Right. Um, looking at it from another perspective, uh, Florida, there, oh, where are they in the standings? Let's take a look here. Just to see how this trade could affect a lot of things. Right. Um, because it all plays into quite a few things. So as it currently sits, it, oh, that's not what I wanted. 
Whoops. Um, as it currently sits, Florida is 8-0-1. Oh, no worries there. Right. Buffalo is 5-3-1. No worries there. Um, Arizona is 0-9-1. Oh, um, as far as their personal pick. And Vegas is sitting... At the bottom of the division with Seattle. Now, that's another kooky thing. If you would have told me that when the Vegas traded Flurry that Leonard wouldn't be as good, I would have told you you're right. Right. <coughs> Leonard needs that starting goalie and that, that good serviceable guy because if he gets caught in his head, you're stuck. Right. You are. Um, so they're right there at the bottom of the division. I mean, every team that was in a rebuild is literally 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, 4 4 well, 3-6. So Seattle's 3-6 and 1, Vegas is 4 and 5, Vancouver's 4 and 5, Los Angeles is 4 5 and 1, Vancouver's 4 5 and 1 as well. Sorry. Uh, Anaheim's 4 4 and 3. Calgary six one and two, uh, San Jose six and three, Edmonton eight and one. Um, we're at sitting at uh, five and five. Not the worst place, but we'll all see where we end up. Right. Um. You now uh, Montreal three and eight, Ottawa three five and one. Uh, Boston is four and three without Tuka Rask. Well, that's not a shocker there. Everybody was ready to get rid of Rask. And well, welcome to that. Uh, Detroit is four, four and two, putting them ahead of Boston. Toronto's four, one and one. Buffalo's five, three and one. Tampa Bay's five, three and one. And Florida is 8 0 oh, 1. Uh, in the Eastern, uh, Pittsburgh's 3 3 and 2. Uh, Islanders 3 2 and 2. New Jersey 4 3 and 1. Philly 5 2 and 1. <coughs> Columbus 9 6 and 3. Or sorry, 6 and 3. Not 9 6 and 3. They haven't played that many games. Uh, Washington's five one and three. Uh, Rangers are six two and two, and Carolina is nine and zero. Oh. Right. Um. So hockey standings wise, it's wide open right now, depending on what division you're in. It really is. All righty. So Sidney Crosby had wrist surgery during the offseason. Most people knew this already. He came out of his injury, played one game, got COVID. Had two shots on goal, two hits, 19 minutes played, and a 4 2 loss. Um, Brian Dublin as well are out. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Um, Chad Ruedel and Marcus Pedersen. So three defensemen for them are out with COVID. Okay. Um, Jeff Carter is injured. Zach Austin Reese is injured. Jake Gensel's injured. Latang's injured. Right now, this. Oh, gosh. Dalton, Danton Heinen is injured. If Giddy Malkin's injured, Brian Rust is injured. Half this team is on injured reserve for the Penguins. I wish them speedy recovery. 
Yes. But personally, as an Ovechkin fan, I chuckle. Not at his suffering, but the fact that he can't play. I wish him a quick recovery because I like watching him play Ovechkin. Them two going at each other is like Gretzky and Lemieux back in the day. Right. Or Messier or Sackick or, you know, when you had those high profile battles with centers and players, it was always good like to have star versus star. You, you didn't right. matter what team you were a fan of, you went like this when those guys were going head to head. Because yep. you love the game. If you're a fan of a hockey team, you love the game. And you always want to see the best out of everybody. Uh, personally, I would like to not see the best out of Big David again for a little while, but <laughs> mm-hmm. we we got a good dose of that this morning. Um, and final part of our NHL news, um, we're just going to give a quick little brief summary of this. Um, check out our next video to get a full breakdown. Um, Peck Arena to have the number 35 hang in the rafters and be immortalized by the Nashville Predators yep. on February 24th. Now, I have been trying to hunt down tickets for this game already, and they're in the 100 to 200 mark on resale sites. Um, I will be contacting the Preds in the morning. <laughs> mm. Um, but being the first predator to ever have your name hanging in the rafter is a huge honor. Yeah. You're the first guy of anything to do anything is a huge honor. But to yeah, be considered to play for one team your whole career, even in hockey, it's not seen often. You got like Crosby, Ovechkin, Pekka. That's it. Everybody else that had played places long periods of time have moved on. Yeah, they have. You, you don't see it. I mean, Gretzky played for St. Louis, Edmonton, LA. Rangers, and the Kings. Yeah. Even he didn't stay where, where he was. You know? Um I, I congratulate Pax. I can't wait till we do it here in Milwaukee. I know we will. Pekka is so important to uh, to our system. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and he means a lot to the Admirals fans. Uh, uh, contrary to what some people may believe, um, we never forgot him here. No. Never, not for a second. Um, I have Funko Pops bobbleheads. Um, I have a banner. I have um, I, I have a lot of stuff from of his. I have jerseys. I, I, I mean, once you captivate the heart of a city and give everything you can to it, when you do that in the AHL and then go do it in the NHL for over a decade, right? You know. And then you stay in that system. And then in your retirement, when you talk about us here, you bring a tear to my eye. And I'm like the toughest dude when it comes to that stuff. And it's just like, dang you. <laughs> I don't want to cry. But we're going to get more into that. And there will be some tears on the next video. So uh, see you guys soon. Um, we got some stuff coming up for you. Uh, lots of news announcements inside uh, the Ambrose Predators and Everblades. We've got a lot for you coming up, so stay tuned uh, for more videos from us. Uh, we are going to take our break now. So. <laughs>